Hello, in today's video we are going to create border mechanics. This border mechanics will allow us to uh, exit on one side of the border and appear on the other side of the border as you can see here on my screen. Okay, before we are going to start our coding, I would like to make a small explanation. Uh, our algorithm will work in the way that when we hit this top border, our player will be instantly transferred to the bottom, so Y value will change to minus, and yeah, and we, we are going to be transferred on the other side of the screen. If we are going to sit, uh, hit left border, our player will be transferred based on the X value, so our value will just change from minus to plus or from plus to minus, depends on which side we hit. I hope it's clear for you. So now let's start our preparation. To hit the border, we need some kind of box collider. So first let's create empty borders and let's create our first border. Ah, before we cre create our first border, please remember always to reset this position. So let's create our first border, it will be left border. Okay. For our border to detect collision, we need box collider 2D, so we can write here box and you will have the uh, name box collider under your research. Uh, please move this um, box collider somewhere to the left, I mean the left border game object, not uh, box collider itself, uh, not only box collider. And yeah, let's make maybe mine on the x direction, maybe, uh, minus 975. Uh, I want to have some distance between the screen because I, I would like to have the behavior when our player will left the border before I would like to see it partially before it gets it gets transfer and after it moves almost fully outside then it hits the box collider and the transfer function will be called and our player will be moved to the to that side. So that will look more natural if we make a border Lead, uh, with a small distance from our camera viewport. Okay, so let's increase our border on y direction. Yes, and 10 would be enough. Now, when we have our first border to, um, to test and prepare for our scripting, create C sharp script. Let's call it tutorial transfer game objects. I call it tutorial transfer game objects. Okay, so double click to open C sharp and now we are, we are in. Okay, so now what we are going to need to do is just to create a script. First, what we are going to create, it will be our transfer func function. So public void transfer okay and our transfer function will receive parameter string and it will be border tag okay I will explain in a minute why it's needed like that uh, and here we are going to use switch statement okay if you are not familiar with the switch statement uh, you can watch my tutorial on my channel there is a tutorial with the, with the switch statement but how it will work we we'll take just this border tag each of our border will have it its own tag so name left border uh, tag no sorry not name the tag left border right border top border and bottom border and depends on that depends on the name proper function will be called so let's write first function so uh, yeah. So for our first function, let's write case, case, left border. So we are here comparing if we have hit the border, sorry, uh, yes, we are comparing if the tag which we provide to transfer a function will be left border. And let's write if the tag will be left border. What we need to do is change transform position. It will be equal to new vector. 
for two. And now what will happen? So we need new to add to the our transfer position new vector. So as I explained already, when our player will hit this border, our transfer position on x value will change from eight to from minus eight, for example, to, to plus eight. Okay? So I think it's clear how it's move. It moves. Okay, so let's get back to our scripting. So now we need to multiply our current position by minus one. So minus one multiplied by trans transform that position dot x and other value will get will stay unchanged. So transform form that posi that y because here if we hit left border we don't change y position okay and that's the construction of the switch state so we'll make now the statement for each instruction so for the uh, if we hit uh, right border actually the change will be the same so now and that's the change for the right border, for the left border, uh, for the top border, we will just multiply y value instead, instead of x value, so top border, and now here we are going to multiply uh, also y value, but this time it's bottom border. Here we are just changing the position of our of our player, but also we need something to trigger this position and to provide us the string name. So now we are going to use Unity event. So private. So let's use function on trigger enter 2D. So private. Okay. So here, if we detect collision, if collision is detected, so if collider from our uh, player game object will hit collider of our wall, it will trigger this function. And when this function is triggered, we would like to use our function. So transfer that position. Uh, or transfer and let's provide here collision dot tag so let me write collision dot tag this means if we hit something we'll check we will provide tag of our collision to our function here transfer border tag and this border tag is used in switch instruction so it means one of this function will be triggered okay so now what's left is to add tags to our borders and also we need to create more borders so first let's uh, maybe create tags so here under the tags you can add tags as you can see here i have already added four tags so we can just click press plus and here we write new tag and click save yeah like that just like that okay so we duplicate the border. Let's rename it to right border. Duplicate next one. Top border. Let's move it somewhere here. Change this one to ten. This one to one. Okay, so six will be okay here. X on zero. Let's increase this one. 
and maybe let's increase it a little bit more as you can see here we need this border to overlap here so our player will not be able to go through this hole so for the top border let's increase it more like this one so it's now yeah let's let's write 20 okay so let's duplicate the border and let's move it ah sorry let's just change here just on the y position just put minus yeah perfect and let's go to bottom border let's change tax so here we have ah, left border here we have right border, top border, and bottom border. Okay, control S. Let's check our script if everything is done. Yes, we have, yeah. It will be three fun function will be triggered. On our player, we have forget to add collider. This time, let's maybe add capsule collider. So, physics to D. Capsule Collider, let's zoom in. Yeah, this one looks nice. Uh, need to work a little bit on it. Yeah, that one looks more better. That one looks better. Smaller one. And a little bit wider. Yeah, like that. Something like that. Okay. So you have, and each border has its own collider. Ah, yeah. We forget to change one thing. Each box collider has to be triggered okay let's move our player here maybe let's change its rotation on z uh, it's not needed okay and let's press ah let's attach our script of course of uh, yeah it will not work if we will not attach our script so we have our transfer game object scripts attached so let's press play and let's test Okay, so let's move. Yeah, works fine. Perfect. But somehow, sometimes, I will try to bug it a little bit. No, no bugs. Perfect. It works as I would like to. But sometimes, if the speed is too slow or uh, some specific movement Sometimes, if your collider will be too big, you will get moved. For example, uh, I need to put borders to, to present it correctly. Sometimes, you might have a bug when your, for example, two borders uh, will trigger each other. So what I mean by that, when your player will move in this area, it's... Uh, its position will be changed, but it will be if it's so deep, its position will be changed to this position. Somehow, sometimes it may happen when you move very fast and uh, refresh rate in the fixed update is 0 0.02. So sometimes it may happen for a big object running very fast. So, so as you can see here, I keep testing our function. It works. Here we have a bug. I have hit uh, both walls those walls trigger each other so to fix that I will show you how to fix that yeah let's be safe as always so to fix that we will create our function bool uh, we'll try create bool va uh, value let's write ready for transfer and to use this value, how I would like to use this value uh, is the way that it will block our trigger for certain time for certain time. So for example, one tenth of a second, uh, transfer will not be possible. Yeah. So let's let's uh, call start function to set up our bool value as true. And let's create in our on trigger enter if statement if our ready for transfer yes yeah, so if it means if if this is true 
So do transfer, tag collision, and also set this ring default transfer value as false. Okay, and in addition, we would like to create something which will switch back our ready for transfer value to true to be able to be transferred again. So to do that, we need to create coroutine, uh, but we would like to do it after a certain amount of time. So to do or to change it or to call any function after a certain amount of time, we have two possibilities. Either we can use uh, coroutine or invoke function, but I prefer to use coroutines, so I will just write e enumerator become ready for transfer and inside this function we'll make our uh, let's say this this line will let us wait a certain amount of time so let's write yield return new wait for seconds 0 dot 1 F. So we will wait one tenth of a second and what's left we need to change this value to true and also we need to start our coroutine so after we hit the border we would like to start our coroutine so uh, sorry we need to write start coroutine and then inside we need to put name of our function so become ready for transfer and that's all so if you like today's video please don't forget to put thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel okay so thank you for watching and do not miss next episode bye bye